good morning. We're glad to see everybody here today. And um, we're, we're glad to have um, Reverend Dostoevsky back with us. He was here recently, and he and his wife. And we're so glad to have him back. We enjoy it every time they come. Um, for the announcements today, We are having a Sunday song request on September 22nd. So in the bulletin, there's a sheet that you can request whatever songs you want us to hear. So turn those in by the 25th, by the uh, September 8th. So, um, have the must ministries going on and there's a, a plate back there and you can put in any money that you want to put in that little plate and you'll put it in the must ministries jar. And is, is, does anybody else have any announcements? We have birthdays today, or this week, Amy Taylor and Lily Shaddy. And we have church membership, Cindy Franklin, and she's been a member for 13 years. And also Faye Dupree, and she has been a member for 83 years. So she's our oldest, longtime member. And she is at the assisted living that we go to see. So we're all we're so glad to see her. And she is really glad when we come. Okay. Um, now let's do the um, the call to worship. Oh. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather here to worship you today, we ask that our hearts and minds be open to your presence. Fill this church with your Holy Spirit. Let every psalm, every prayer, every word spoken glorify you, Lord, and draw us closer in communion with you and with each other. We ask that you bring with us everyone and be safe with everyone who's traveling this Labor Day weekend. Be with them, keep them safe, and bring them back, well rested, and enjoy their vacation. Keep them safe and, in, and let them enjoy their time away from home. We also, Lord, please allow our families and our friends and our church family who are not here today, but who are on our minds and our hearts, hearts to feel your presence and to accept you as, as, your, as their Savior, Lord. Give them peace each and every day. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Please stand now as we will say the affirmation of faith and the printed in your bullet. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth in the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Please stand if you're able as I bring you the second scripture reading for this morning. It comes from Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 31, and it is titled, Do Not Worry. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word of God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, or what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, do not worry about the rest. Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. But that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. How much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. And do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after such things, and your Father knows what you need. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you. This is the word of God for you and the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so happy to be here today to worship in you, listening to your word, and to give thanks for all of our many blessings. Please open our minds and hearts as we listen to today's message. May we have the wisdom to truly understand what it means to trust in God and not to worry. Be with us today, Lord, and allow us to feel the Holy Spirit as we worship you. May the words from my mouth and the meditation that is in my heart be pleasing to you, Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. I'm Pastor Joe, and my wife and I, Jessica, are so happy to be invited back to share the worship with you and share the word of the Lord. Today's message is titled, Do Not Worry. And as I started to think about this message and how I wanted to express and communicate how important it is and how, how bad it is, is when we worry, and I started to think about it and then I realized that I was starting to worry about it. You see, you see how easy it is to begin to worry? When something gets into your brain and you start thinking about it and it starts to spin around inside of you, that's when worrying begins. Well, then I remembered a song from back in 1988 titled, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And every time I hear this song, it just puts a smile on my face. And if you don't remember the song, I'm going to read some lyrics so you can put a smile on your face, too. The lyrics went like this. Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it, sing it note for note. Don't worry, be happy. In every life, we have some trouble. When we worry, you make it double. Don't worry, be happy. Ain't got no place to lie your head. Someone came and took your bed. Don't worry. Be happy. The landlord says your rent is late. He may have to litigate. Don't worry. Be happy, man. Well, again, I just always smile and I sing along to that song because it just is such a great, lighthearted song. But unfortunately, I think that song is easier to sing than it is not to worry. You see, some of us worry some of the time, and others worry all the time. Our scripture reading tells us not to worry about anything, and Jesus instructs us not to worry because worrying can't give us one more hour in our life. So why do we do it? The past couple of years have been among the hardest in our lifetimes. After going through COVID and everything else, it's been really hard. And we've grown accustomed to a prevailing attitude of worrying. Even the news we hear or read seems to be crafted to give us more things to worry about. 
Every story reported is negative, and it makes us worry more. Will we have enough food? Will we have a place to live? How are we healthy? Will the world be safe? Will our neighborhood be safe? Will our families be safe? Things that we worry about all the time. So today I thought we would examine worrying and why, why we worry and what we worry about and how to fight against the sin of worrying. Three areas that I want to look into today. And yes, it is a sin to worry. Because when you see, we don't follow God's word. We don't follow what Jesus taught us. Then we are sinning. So we should not be worrying at all. Well, the first question is a simple one. Why do we worry? Well, we worry because we can't control things. Which means we have control issues. We want to be in charge. We want to be in control. And when we can't control things, we worry about them. As Christians, we believe that God is in control of everything. And if you don't think that that's right, and if you don't really believe that God is in control, then who or, who or what controls your life? If it isn't God, who controls your life? As we do as Christians, again, believe that God is control, but we as humans, we try to be in control all the time. But then when we face that situation, when reality just hits us right in the face, and the situation is beyond our control, then we start worrying and have anxiety over things. Because trying to control everything does lead to fear and anxiety. It is also a big distraction that prevents us from following the Word of God. We get distracted. This distraction leads us to doubt our own abilities to do the right thing. And then we become stuck in the world of inaction. Because I see that's what happens when we worry. We get stuck and we don't do the right thing or we don't do anything. We worry because we try to be in control instead of letting God and trusting God and the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us and to be the person we follow. Now, question number two asks, what do we worry about? Well, here are the top seven things that Americans worry about. First is the future. Isn't that true? We do worry about the future. Well, then we also worry about the past. The things we've done in the past and people we've hurt and wanting to know we can have forgiveness. We all worry about money and what we have enough and what bills to pay. And I know we worry about our health. Some of us worry about job security or our relationships. And a lot of people really worry about what other people think about them, which is really sad, but people really do worry about that. These things are some of the things that we worry about. I'm not going to ask who worries about them, or if you worry about all of them, you can tell me after service. But I know there's a few there that I worry about as well. When we looked at our scripture reading, Jesus tells us, tells us today and them that we worry about earthly things, and we should not worry about the things about food and clothing. We should really just concentrate on Him and worry about these things. We see this in verse 22. Therefore I tell you, do, worry, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, or what you will wear. For life is more than food, and your body is more than clothes. Well, I think there's a, a few people on TikTok that would disagree with that last statement about your body being more than clothes, because that's all I talk about. We should not be worrying about these things. Now this does make a lot of sense considering how the people lived back in Jesus' time. Telling them not to worry about these things because they didn't have a pantry filled with supplies and food, nor did they have a stock refrigerator. Often they didn't know where the next meal was coming from. And they didn't have that full closed closet. In most cases, the only clothes they owned were the clothes on their back. 
Jesus offers them peace and comfort by focusing on these two everyday common examples that show them what it means not to worry. First, he talks about the ravens in verse 24. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. How much more val valuable you are than the birds. We don't see ravens sitting around on a branch worrying about the next meal, do we? No, that's because God takes care of them. He tells us that we're more valuable than the ravens, so he also takes care of us. So don't worry. But it does seem our values have changed in the years, in the past few years. You see, we protect animals like the spotted owl and the sea turtle, yet many of us really don't care about unborn babies. And that's really sad, that our, our values have changed in that direction. We need to take care of the unborn more than we should be taking care of the ravens, because God will take care of them. Then we see in verse 28, Jesus talks about clothing. And he uses the example of the lily in the fields. He says that that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. How much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? Scripture tells us that God will clothe you only if you allow him to. Only if you accept him as your Savior will he clothe you. So many people do worry about the clothes that you wear as they walk into their cloak closet and they realize that they don't wear half the clothes they own. They're too tight, they're too loose, or they're out of style. Then you do realize when you're standing there looking at everything that you own that you have so much more than the world. The rest of the world has nothing compared to what we have. You see, back then, back then in Jesus, that they couldn't go to Kohl's or go to Amazon and buy things. They truly had to make things for themselves. Then Jesus talks about what we should eat. In today's world, many, many people worry about when or what they will eat. On the other hand, there are many, many people in the world, worldwide starving, and many children go to bed hungry, even today. Our problem here is that we stand out of our refrigerator or our pantry and ask ourselves, oh, what do I feel like eating today? Maybe I'll have some fresh fruit or maybe I'll have a sandwich. And meanwhile, we have so much and there's so many people who have nothing. People back then had to find food every day. They had no Publix or Kroger to go to. They either fished or farmed in order to eat. How fortunate are we today that our lives are so different? Well, something else happens when you worry or you're anxious. Some of us turn to food, such, cake, such as cake, ice cream, or candy, and we can't stop eating because we worry, we're anxious, we're worrying, and we just have to do something. So we pick up that bag of chips and the bag of pretzels and we just start munching away. On the other hand, some people, when they begin anxious and worry, can eat and don't eat, and then they become sick. You know, there is a reason why people eat when they get stressed, and, and I did discover this just recently. See, if you take the word stressed and spell it backwards, it spells desserts. It really does. You should write it down. But stress spelled backwards is desserts. People like me eat when they're stressed. And I love pie. Peach pie, apple pie, blueberry pie, any kind of pie. So many people eat when they're stressed, including me. Some studies have shown that worrying affects the whole body, not only just our internal organs, but our heart, our blood flow, our nervous system, and the internal system is affected with worrying, and it makes us sick. Now the last question I want to deal with in this message is the idea that worrying is a sin. 
And we should be able to fight this sin that approaches us every time we worry. It is a sin when we don't follow God's word. The first thing we need to do is take control of our every thought. Every thought you have planted in your brain can lead to worry. It's a battle. It's a battle of our minds. It's a battle in our minds that we need to always be aware of. <clears throat> what happens when the first thought enters our mind and it's a starting point? It's the little seed of worry. And that's where the battle begins. Jesus talks about this in verse 30. For the pagan world runs after such things, and your father knows what you, what you need then. Now some translations use the word nations instead of pagan world. He's saying that an unsaved world goes after the things, these things, like clothing and food, and just being aware and worrying about what other people think. But we as Christians, we as Christians have God to turn to and to lean on and to help us. So when that little thought comes into our mind, we turn to God in prayer and petition, and it changes. We lean on Him. Through God's grace and power, we have a weapon to fight the battle of worry and anxiety. The rest of the world, the pagan world, the, the ones who don't know God, don't have this weapon. They can't turn and turn to the strength of God to help us through these things. Only those who know God can win the battle in our minds. Think about everything you ever worried about in your life that did not come true. All those things that you worried about that never, ever happened. What a waste of time and energy. But we've all done it. We must learn to lean on our Heavenly Father because He does know what we need. We have a Heavenly Father who loves us and will take care of us. That's why as believers we need to focus on our thoughts on God and not on earthly things. The last thing we can do to win this battle is to pray. Pray until we receive the God's peace. Pray until you receive God's peace. These instructions are found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Listen to these words. They are very strong. They're very powerful. They tell us what to do. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide, guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Do not be anxious. Every situation. Go to God in prayer, petition, with thanksgiving. It tells us, not to, it tells us to turn to God with prayer and petition in every situation in our lives. See, when we pray, we commune with God, we connect with Him. It's a relationship, it's an open conversation when we talk to God in our prayers. And it truly should be that way, that you are talking to your Heavenly Father, an open, open heart, open mind, just confessing our sins, telling Him and asking us for forgiveness, and getting our heart truly connected with Him. And the word petition is defined as make or present a formal request to an authority. And God is our authority. And you can ask. You can ask for things or for questions or for healing or for peace in your heart. Make that request to God. Ask Him in your prayers. Ask Him for forgiveness. And when we do these things, when we, do, when we go to prayer, when we go to petition and ask Him, in our prayers we have made our confessions of our sins, and in our petition we ask for a peace of God, and then when we do these things, we do it with thanksgiving in our heart. It is so important always to be thankful and praise God for everything He has provided. When we do this, when we turn our hearts and minds to God, we receive peace like no other no other way to describe it, but it is just amazing, the peace that comes over you. We see this in verse 7. 
and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It transcends all understanding. Nobody understands this peace that can come over you, that you are connected with God, and no one understands. No one understands it, but they see it within you. They look at you and they say, why are you so restful? Why do you look so peaceful? The world around you is blowing up. How do you have this attitude of comfort and peace? And you know why. Because you believe in God. You're a child of God. And he gives you this rest and this peace in your heart. It's a peace that God pours out on all of his children. And we are his children. We are the children of God. This peace guards our hearts and minds. We see in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, these words. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. He does. He truly does. Cast away everything, all your worries, all your anxieties, all your fears. Live with that peace in your heart that people will see and they'll want to know what it is. And that gives you the opportunity to speak to them about your belief in Jesus Christ. So today, as you prepare to leave this worship service and spend the rest of your day enjoying this beautiful weather, let's not worry if the Braves are going to make the playoffs, okay? And let's not worry if the Falcons are able to win, win one game. And most importantly, let's not worry about who will be our next president. Let it go. Don't worry about it. Enjoy the peace that God offers you. Enjoy the connection you have with prayer and petition within. Let that peace just in, invoke and just come within you and just surrender everything to God. Let it all go and give it to God because he will take care of us. Let it be so. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we confess we worry about too many things rather than trusting and listening to you, you and your word. Help us to learn to cast away our cares. And day by day and moment by moment, let us cast them away. As each worry and concern forms in our minds, we must pray that you would take those things away and we can give them Give them to Christ. You will help us gather them together in those thoughts in our minds and we will give them to you. We pray that with your help, you, you will be able to help us through any anxieties and fears and worries we have. You have promised to carry us through all of life's difficulties and provide for all of our family's needs. We give thanks to you, Lord. We give thanks to you every day as we pray. We give thanks for your goodness and grace and the peace that is offered for our hearts. We say these things in your name. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn, number 208. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus.